Hi, I'm Dan Leonard in the East. And I'm George Whittem in the West. And together we are East East West West Audio Audio Body Body Shop. Shop. Well, we have a very special program coming up for you this Monday night. Two great friends of ours, some of the nicest people in the business and their musicians. Rosie and Brian Amador will be joining us from Boston, Massachusetts, under 20 feet of snow. But they'll be here talking about their bilingual business, how they share a studio and do all this stuff as a couple, and they're going to play some music for us. I lied about not having more footage from Nam. I have more footage from Nam, so there'll be a couple more product highlight videos for you guys to check out. Just the cool stuff that I've cherry picked for you. Oh, I love seeing that. And we'll answer your questions, and you can ask them by writing to ewebshop at gmail.com. We'll see you East West Audio Body Shop, six o'clock in the West, nine o'clock in the East. And we'll see all of you in the chat room. And we'll see all of you there. He's the home voiceover studio engineer to the stars in Los Angeles, California. A Virginia Tech grad whose knowledge of the latest recording gear is second to none. He's a voice actor and a home studio master hailing from Buffalo, New York. His home studio skills and knowledge of voiceover recording is unmatched. When Dan and George talk shop, people listen. And the talk continues tonight. Welcome to East West Audio Body Shop. East West Audio Body Shop is brought to you by Edge Studio, providers of voiceover education, production, and technology. Harlan Hogan's Voiceover Essentials, products hand-picked for voice actors. VoiceZam, a totally unreal demo player for voiceover professionals. The Home Studio Master, get a handle on your professional voiceover studio. And VoiceOver Extra, your one-stop resource for voiceover success. And now, live from his high-tech facility in Santa Monica. And his penthouse studio in Buffalo. Here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Good evening, I'm Dan Leonard in the East. And I'm George Whittem in the West. And together we are East East West West Audio Audio Body Body Shop. Shop. For the time being, anyway. All righty, we have a fabulous show tonight, as we do every week, as I say every week, because we haven't failed to have a fabulous show in almost four years. That's right. (laughs) Everyone's been gold. That's right. Absolute gold. Mm-hmm. Ka-ching. Uh, tonight, we've got a great, great guest. Uh, some really great friends of mine, Rosie and Brian Amador, joining us from Boston, Massachusetts. We're going to have some great fun with them, learning about the unique kind of stuff that they do. Uh, we've got the news. We've got more stuff from Nam. We've got some music. What else could you ask for on a chilly night in the Northeast and apparently just a fine day in the southwest of our country? Anyway, but to get things going. Time now to take a look at the news. EWAB's News. In our first story tonight, yes, I, George and I will be attending WovoCon April 17th through 19th at, a, at the Hilton Lake Las Vegas in Henderson, Nevada. Gorgeous place. If you're a member of Wovo and you haven't decided to go, too late. You've got to go. It isn't too late, actually. You can still sign up. You can come. You can have a great time with us as we we plan the future of our business there. We're going to totally take over. Not completely, but who knows. Uh, But we're going to both be there. And uh, if you you sign up and get uh, get your registration, and if you're a member of World Voices Organization before uh, February 28th, 50 bucks off. Well worth it. That's fifty. That's fifty bucks more that you can put on, you know, on the uh, blackjack table. Uh, anyway, you can sign up at uh, at worldvo.org forward slash events forward slash wovocon dash ii forward slash. I think the last forward slash is optional, but you it's can optional. see what happens. <laughs> on February twenty fifth, we'll have a meet and greet at Edge Studio with snacks and beverages. Um, I'll be in New York. I'm flying out there tomorrow. Um, Then I'll be in New York City Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. 
And on the, the Wednesday night, we'll, if you want to come out, uh, we'd love for you to RSVP. It's nice so that we can get an idea how much stuff to buy. You can enter RSVP on the website. And here's another nice long domain name to write down. Info.edgestudio.com slash RSVP dash George dash Widom dash meet dash greet. Got it? <laughs> 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 Why don't you just put that up there? Make it a lot easier for I know, people. It'll be, it it'll be, be in the show notes too. Yeah. Anyway, but uh, yeah, if you can come, it'd be a lot of fun. It'll be, it'll be me just hanging out with everybody at the studio. You get to see our beautiful, amazing studio in Midtown Manhattan, and uh, pick my brain for a while. Should be fun. That could be messy. <laughs> right. Uh, let's see what else we got going on. The Verge. Now, who is the Verge, George? Just quickly. Well, they're they're a huge uh, uh, tech journal, tech blog. Oh, you okay. Know, so, right. Uh, right. The Verge. Well, the, yes, The Verge says that Apple will be offering free repairs on 2011 through 2013 MacBook Pros with video issues. That's good because I was just about to drop my my MacBook Pro <laughs> just to see if, what would happen with that. Um, Anyway, if it, apparently the, are they having problems with video issues? Anyway, but they're gonna they're gonna be fixing those free and reimbursements to those who have already paid for repairs. Uh, find out if you're covered if you've been having video issues uh, at uh, https colon forward slash forward slash. I should just do this with a sword. That would make it a lot better. Um, Selfsolve.apple.com forward slash one word this is a long word agreement warranty with a capital w dynamic with a capital d dot do and by the way domain names do not care about caps you don't have to worry about the caps they uh, don't. yeah agreement warranty di- I, I i i use that crazy link because it's the only way to get directly to the information otherwise you have to go through apple's crazy website to find it so Okay. Um, but yeah, I've heard of a lot of people with uh, video issues, um, and on that on 2011s particularly. But apparently, it spanned you know three model years. And when Apple admits they have a problem and offers to repair it, that must mean it's more than a handful of people. So apparently, you know what? Over the years, I've had great luck with Apple repairing things that are out of warranty, and this is one of those cases where they do that. It's pretty amazing. Me too. Me too. Um, Especially battery issues and all sorts of yeah. weird stuff. It's usually MacBook Pros, so that's another story. Um, from VoiceOver Extra, uh, there was a story about the fact that Edge Studio has some new coaches added to the staff. So some of the people we've added to the staff uh, this year are Rachel Brutera, who's teaching animation, accents, and voice matching. Um, Arthur Insana, who's teaching audiobooks. Joe Lesh, our buddy Joe Lesh. Uh, he'll be teaching commercial animation and audiobooks. Uh, Suzanne Pinedo is our education advisor. She's new to the staff. She's really, really, really sweet lady. Uh, Chris Smith is teaching animation and video games. Haley Wallace is education advisor as well, working with Suzanne. And Simone Fugil teaching Spanish voiceover. So an amazing uh, array of talent that we've added to our staff. That puts us well over, I think, 30 coaches now working at Edge. Wow. Pretty awesome. How do they fit them all in there at one time? I know, I know. It's pretty remarkable. But I think that... And that's a look at the E-Web's news. Is the end of the news. Okay, good. All right, he. Well... Now, this, there's this thing here. It says something really cool to demonstrate acoustical effects of different spaces. Yeah, we can we can push that to later in the show if we okay, don't want we'll to fill time. To you know, that's kind of a, I would say it's a time filler, but it is really, really We, we don't have a cool. whole lot of time to fill. No, tonight. it's a busy show tonight. I'll move it to the end in case we have time, but it is freaking cool. Okay. That's all I got to say. Cool. Very cool. <laughs> and remember, folks, acoustics is 90% of the quality of your audio. That's and right. to that, uh, we come into our Q&A for this week. And we actually have a question here from somebody on SpeakPipe. Oh, cool. KDs actually called into our, our official number for asking questions right. and asked this question. All right. Let me, let me play that here. Just got to push that button and push this one. Hi guys, I'm new to voiceover and I've been recording in a walk-in closet in an upstairs bedroom. My office where I do editing is downstairs. Editing in the closet's not really an option. I would like to be doing everything in one place, but I can't afford to purchase a sound booth right now. 
My office is about 10 by 10, and I'm adding some Oralex acoustic foam to improve the sound floor. In one corner of my office is a small bay area with three double pane windows. I live out in the woods with no traffic or noise from neighbors, except for occasional coyote howling. I can record either facing toward or away from the windows. Do you have any recommendations for acoustic treatment for the windows? I don't have any current, any curtains on them right now. Or is this a big enough problem I should just stay in the closet and get lots of exercise going up and down the stairs? <laughs> that's a great question. I, that's a great way to end that. It is. Wonderful <laughs> question, man. That's what I love getting those speak pipe recordings because right. they sound she really actually good. Sounds, she sounds pretty good. I think yeah. she'll do just fine in the yeah. business. Has a good presence to her. Exactly. Well, you know, I mean, well, there's two points there. I mean, and George and I could both address these. Mm -hmm. uh, should she stay in the closet? Well, that's that's what XLR cables are for. You know, it's you, you may not want to, you know, you may want to you not edit in the same place and you, you record. I certainly don't. I mean, you want to be able to concentrate on what you're doing one thing at a time. And sometimes it's best to totally disassociate yourself with all the gear that's around you and go hide in your closet. Sometimes it's best to get away, even if it's far away. If you've got enough cable to get your mic down into your closet somewhere that's big enough and is easier to acoustically treat, that's a great place to do that uh, because it's going to be quieter in a closet. It is much easier to acoustically treat. You know, here in my office, you can hear I'm in an office. I've got acoustical panels in here, but it's still a lot of hard surfaces and stuff. And that's actually what if you if she was recording that from her office uh, where she's planning on doing that, you can hear what the acoustical environment was like. Jorge? Yeah, I mean, you can work in either space with, as long as, the, I usually tell people the space you're going to concentrate on the most is probably going to be whatever is the quietest space. Um, it's hardest to get rid of background noise. It's a lot easier to make a room sound less reverb-y, reverb less echoey, as I was demonstrating the echo earlier. Um, it's, it's a lot easier to make a room less echoey, less reverby. It's a lot harder to make the room quieter. So if you're working in the closet, cause it's the quietest space, it's the only room you can find that's quiet. Then it makes sense to keep doing kind of what you're doing. Um, but, uh, if you can make that other, if the other room is quiet enough, um, draperies, nice, heavy blackout curtains, you can find them on Amazon, not expensive, drape over those windows so they don't echo anymore. And, uh, yeah, some, uh, some moving blankets tacked up on the walls. You can make a little frame out of PVC pipe as Dan and has demonstrated on the Several show times. at least once or twice. Uh, you can make a frame and hang some blankets up very, very quickly and easily um, and create a, a pretty acoustically dead or neutral sounding space. So uh, it's up to you. Uh, you can work, you can try both. You can try switching off. I know people that have a booth but they sometimes sit and work outside the booth at their desk, even though it's not quite as quiet. They know there's certain sessions that they can kind of get away from it or get away with it, I should say. And right. uh, it gives them a different space to be in. It's more comfortable. You're not always in the booth. So, you know, variety can be the spice of life. Yeah, I do it all the time. My booth is right behind me here, way on the other side of my palatial estate here. <laughs> and, um, and, you know, and then I've got my, my, you know, my broadcast mic right here, which I can use and throw into my mix whenever I want to do that. Right. You know, sometimes it calls for a different mic and that's, you know, so you can do that. Yeah. But, you know, I think if you're just starting out, perhaps not good to be distracted by all the stuff, you, you know, all the, the technical stuff and yeah. just concentrate on one thing at a time. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah sometimes we get question, sometimes yeah. we get ahead of ourselves with the technology of so solution. Sometimes simple. Well, a lot of times simpler is better. Yeah, I, uh, I don't like that with coffee. You know, right? <laughs> Bill Lord says, "Do you gentlemen have any advice regarding mic placement? Is there a perfect place to put the mic before opening your mouth? In front of your mouth, <laughs> preferably." Which is a perfect lead-in for uh, what I've got going on Thursday night, mm. which is we've got uh, the ultimate mic choice webinar from uh, VoiceOver Extra. You can still sign up for that over at voiceoverextra.com. And uh, I'm going to announce, ultimately, what is the best mic for VoiceOver? <laughs> <laughs> That's a tall order. It is, which is why I'm making a 
big, a big deal out of it. Uh, but we're going to talk about how microphones work, how, what proper mic technique. I'll give you a little preview. Don't talk into the diaphragm of the microphone, because when you do that, especially if you don't, uh, if you're too close and you go, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle peppers, it's going to, you're going to get plosives. Yeah, that one pops However, up if, if you have the microphone, uh, you know, I'm sorry, let me go, down, let me go so full got, screen on you. There we go. Sorry. Okay, I had you split right. screen now. That's better. Oh, okay. Yeah. So if, if you have, I could even move the camera a little bit. Too. Perfect. If, if the diaphragm of the mic should really be right at the same level of the bridge of your nose or your eyes, which by the way, amazingly is the same height as your ears. Gee, what, who'd have thunk that one? In most uh, cases. In most cases. Yeah. I mean, there are some people with, you know, slightly different oblong heads, but if you don't talk directly into the diaphragm, you're hearing me normally as I would in a conversation five to seven inches away. And I can go Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers while picking bananas all day long. And it's not going to, we're not going to get any plosives. I I'm, you know, I, I haven't been using a pop screen for years. I might on a four sixteen if I'm doing some close read or something like that, but the perfect attitude for a condenser mic is about there. Have your copy underneath totally unobstructed. And that's proper mic technique. Dr. Lord. Did you, did you see uh, the Grammys or the Oscars last night? Of course I did. Did you see Tim McGraw? Did you see Tim McGraw? That was a, I was like, that is a Telefunken something or other. That was an AKG C12, an original AKG C12. So vintage. Big mic. Did you see the way it was placed? Now he's a singer. He doesn't need to have it above him. He's not trying to read a script, right? But and he wasn't. He, and he wasn't close mic. There was, was no pop screen, him. as I put yeah. it. Though he was flying without a net, mm. but no pop screen on that mic. And you can see the diaphragm on that mic extremely easily. I mean, the diaphragm yep. is very visible. Super, super easy to pop that mic. But because of, he was working at just the right angle, so that he never had to worry about popping it. I mean, that's mic technique right there. I mean, that's real confidence in your skill with a microphone. And pr- he's probably used that mic in the studio for a very long time. So he just knows that mic intimately well. Yeah. But that and was really cool. Good. That was yeah, cool. It, yeah. And it was a good song too, which is, uh, yeah. which unfortunately didn't win for best song, which, you know. Well, we, that, I know. Yeah. The, the other Oscars. one, the one for best song was fantastic too. So. Yeah. That was, that was very moving. That very was moving. amazing. And speaking of moving, we're going to move along here. Uh, if if you have a question for us, because as you know, we love to talk home studio tech or personal studio tech uh, here on East West Audio Body Shop. We're here to help you guys out, and we're happy to answer your questions. You can send them into ewabshop at gmail.com. And you, too, could have your question here on eWebs. Anyway, Brian and Rosie Amador coming up in just a couple of minutes. We've got some NAM footage to look at quickly. And uh, we'll be right back after this. We all agree that iTunes is one of the best ways to listen to music. Well, what if your voiceover demos could be presented the exact same way, where each clip inside your demo is listed as a clickable, playable track? Well, now you can if your demo is presented with the interactive demo player only from VoiceAm. In VoiceAm, each track inside your demo is clearly titled for producers to view, select, and play. Now, we all know that producers will only listen to the first few tracks of your demos, right? But not on VoiceAm. With VoiceAm, producers can interact with your demo, clicking on what they want to hear. They'll stay longer, listening to all your voice work because they want to. Plus, with VoiceAm's exclusive Zamtistics, you'll know exactly what they listen to, when, and for how long. So why not give producers a chance to hear all your voice work with VoiceAm? Go to VoiceAm.com and sign up now. Plus, get an exclusive 45-day trial when you use the promo code EWABS. Learning never ends. You continue to grow. Edge Studio has grown. Pursue multiple disciplines in tandem and grow your career. We've added new courses in a new curriculum. We picked the best coaches from the community of working voice actors. A new technology division, engineering and consulting, led by George Whittem. Follow your dream. Sign up for advanced learning or register for an introduction to voice acting or foundation studies program. See it all now at the new edgestudio.com. Okay, we're back here at East West Audio Body Shop. You know, 
Who who was the who was the uh, announcer for the Oscars last night? Cedaring Fox, who we yeah, are. I thought it was Cedaring Fox. Working on to be a guest on the show soon. Outstanding. We got to get her on. Mm-hmm. You know? I mean, we've we we actually sort of had her on before once. Yeah. I think before that's voiceover a couple of years ago. That's right. See, now we can actually talk about the show being a couple of years ago. Yeah, because know. you know, in 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 about three weeks will be our fourth anniversary doing this show. If you can believe that. This is episode 179. And, you know, I think you guys could probably, you know, get out of the chat room one of these days and, you know, and not, not necessarily to hang in there all this time, but you know. We do have lives, <laughs> but we're, we're going to we're, we're trying to figure out some fun way to celebrate our, our, uh, our, our fourth year of doing this show together. We had a great time last year over at, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Angangusa's house in, uh, in Irvine and, uh, the food was fabulous, but I'm going to be back East and where are you going to be? You're going to be everywhere in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. I mean, uh, tomorrow flying to Pennsylvania, then the next morning, taking the train into New York, then taking the train back to Pennsylvania. Then, uh, then coming back, then eight days later, flying to Atlanta. Then I'll be for a voice of Atlanta. Then I'll be flying from Atlanta to Louisville, Kentucky for Papa John's pizza. <laughs> and then from Papa John's, I'll be making my way back here again and then going to Vegas a week or so later and then back and then Vegas again and then back. You know, the, it, when you fly into Vegas, there's only one thing you hear. Do, 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 do. Wheel. Oh, fortune. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure I, if I'll be flying or driving in this time. To be oh, honest. okay. Well, you still have to go in the airport and hear that. But. Yeah, exactly. I'll go out of my way just to hear that. I, every, every time I land in McCarran Airport, I immediately pick up the phone and call Dave Quavassier or text him going, I hate McCarran Airport. <laughs> <laughs> i just take a couple of quarters and go in there. <laughs> All righty. Uh, a little bit more Nam stuff, and then we'll try and get to Rosie and Brian here eventually. I'll keep it short. I'm just going to run okay. one video. The rest of them that I release will all be available on the Widom's World feed over at Edge Studios' YouTube channel, guys. So if you want to see absolutely everything that I did there, it will all be there eventually. Um, but I picked this one out because, well, you know, we talk about the iPad a lot. We like to talk about what it's good for, what it's not good for, but there's one company making some pretty impressive software for the iPad for recording, and it really is like a full-blown DAW. It is no joke. So anyway, here's a little video, and thanks to Lee Penny for cutting this together for me. Here we go. Hey, everybody. George Whittem for Whittem's World here at NAMM 2015, the last day. And we're picking up some really interesting vendors. This is a product I've known about for a while, but I'm really going to learn about it for the first time directly from the source. I'm with Corey from Wave Machine Labs, and he's got the Aria. Tell us all about it. Yeah, so uh, we're introducing Aurea Pro. Aurea Pro brings a whole slew of new features. We finally have a full MIDI sequencer, uh, 32 internal stereo buses for routing, Holy six cow. aux tracks, uh, and now <laughs> from the original Aurea, right now can do 48 tracks of simultaneous playback. Aurea Pro moves into unlimited audio and MIDI track playback, as well as a huge new feature, which is transient detection and real-time warping. So wow. there are more features in here than, you know, we were hoping to show, but it's, uh, we're in alpha right now. We're super excited and it really moves us into a professional DAW on the iPad. So what are some of the features that might be helpful for someone that maybe doesn't need the track count, but does need a lot of pro powerful processing? Right. Like I need to be able to fine tune a downward expander at 10 dB with, you know, uh, I need a, a little bump of EQ and a roll up, that kind of stuff. Voice actors really need that kind of thing. Right. Can you do, can you do all that with this? Yeah. So every copy of Aurea comes with a PSP channel strip on every channel. It's the same sonic quality that you would expect from a great PSP plugin on any desktop DAW. There's um, a whole slew of other plugins available from FabFilter, F Expansion, and PSP through our online store, and it's the same exact sonic quality that you would get from any plugin on your DAW. But out of the box. Uh, you get at least some basic processing? You're getting you basic processing, uh, convolution, reverb, delay course, yeah, very basic processing, but the PSP channel strip is phenomenal. Nice. And in terms of doing recording, uh, up to 2496 resolution, so it's going to sound crisp, it's going to be, you know, professional, standard. And the PSP is the PSP processing is standard with this Pro version? Yeah. That's part, it's built that's, in. That, that is part of it. Oh, wow. 
killer. Yeah, the, the channel strip on every channel, and it's uh, it sounds fantastic. Can you show me? The, so this is the mixing interface. Can you show me the editing interface? Yeah, absolutely. So you just hit the little waveform uh -huh. up there, and obviously you can see the new MIDI track, which is going to be new to a lot of our existing customers sure. right now, with a full piano roll editor. It's and it's going to come with all the MIDI tools that you would expect to have with any great DAW. You know, in comprehensive zooming. Yeah. It, it's all there. We kind of had to rethink the way to make it really intuitive for the touch screen and make it smooth to go in line with Orion, which is already really easy and nice to use. How about if I want to edit one track with some real detail? Do you just double click? How do you, how do you, you get can, on? Well, just, you can you zoom in there. Zoom. Or there's zoom buttons up in the top, but you can get right into the sample. Oh, wow. So it's it's sample accurate, you know. Show me a basic edit. Say I want to take out, you know, a syllable or a mouth click or something yeah, right in the middle absolutely. of the Absolutely. So right now we, we do have snapping on for our demo, but if you click up in the timeline bar, you see your timeline come up there. And as long as your region is highlighted, you can see the blue around there. All you do is hit split, and there you go. And oh, now nice. you just made a new region. Just grab that, and let's see. Let's see if I can get it. And then you make your edits, you know, you have fading, you have all your basic tools that you would expect to have from any DAW. So what's this tool, this handle here? That, that is your fade. So That's you your hit, fade tool. You hit oh. it once and all the fade options come up there, and they're all customizable. Let's see if I can grab it. The snapping for the demo makes it a little harder okay. to do here. The snapping mode is yeah, kind of funky. Yeah, there's your fade. Gotcha. And you can see the wave changing in real time. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, and what's also Very great nice. for voiceover artists is the AAF file format interchange. So you can move in between Logic, Pro Tools, and you can take your session, drop it right into here through AAF export, work on the go, you know, record a new vocal, export it as AAF, go right back into Pro Tools. You can export to, drop, uh, to Dropbox, email, SoundCloud. There's tons of different options. Very nice. Excellent. And uh, when's it available and what will be people will be paying for it? So Aurea Pro is going to be launching this spring. And if you're not a current Aurea user, it's going to be $49.99. Which for that price point, what you're, you're getting me? is just phenomenal. Yeah. The pricing is crazy. Like the pricing for iPad apps is so bizarre. I know. It's <laughs> so much lower than what you'd expect yeah. to be. So we're really happy to be able to bring this many features in a professional DAW to, to real users out there. Awesome, man. Well, I appreciate your time, Corey. Absolutely. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right. Well, I can't wait to go to NAMM next year because I'll be a lot closer. And, you know, it's like all this candy in front of you. Oh, it's a lot of candy. I mean, and, and it's, it's, it can take a lot of, I mean, there's a lot to see there, right? So the first few years, your head is just constantly on a swivel. It's very hard to focus in on what you really want to cover. Um, and sometimes we spend time on products that, you know, maybe you're just kind of not really directly related to what we need. Maybe this might be one of those things. I just look at this as for folks who find that they miss the functions of Pro Tools or Reaper and they want it on an iPad, this is really basically what you're going to, you're, you're going to get something as powerful as Reaper or some of the other tools and for an iPad and it's 50 bucks, which right. in the world of apps or iPad apps is a lot of money. But when you compare it to its functionality, compared to, I don't know, Cubase or some other Pro Tools or Audition, it's pretty pretty remarkable for 50 bucks. Very cool. Very yeah. cool. All right. Is that it for the NAM videos? Yeah. Like I said, if you want to see more NAM, there's, there's going to be more as I trickle them out, and they will be available at Edge Studios' YouTube channel. So okay. we'll go see them over there. Time for a fresh tip of the week next week. Yes, sir. We'll just All see righty. That. Okay. Well. We have a, another 40 minutes of uh, fabulous fun coming your way. we got a great couple coming on, going to tell us about their great business, play us some music, and, and hang out with us. Uh, Rosie and Brian Amador will be with us in just a couple of seconds here. Well, maybe, yeah, 130, 140 seconds here on East West Audio Body Shop. But first, we got to talk about our main patron of East West Audio Body Shop, the one and only Harlan Hogan. And uh, go on over to voiceoveressentials.com because he's got what you need for voiceover. I mean, we've talked about the headphones. We talked about the microphone, the VO1A, the signature series headphone. We, we talk about that all the time. You should be owning those anyway. But if you don't, go buy them. Now, if you do own them or want to find something else, go over to voiceoveressentials.com and check out some of the other things in there. We haven't talked about the Porta Booth much 
in the last couple of couple of months, which was, of course, what got Harlan started in this business in the first place. Now, when I was in California last week, uh, and I had to get something done in my the bedroom at my mom's house, which has fortunately has this nice closet behind it where I can hang a blanket and stuff and set things up just right. The number one rule of voiceover: when you want work. Make plane reservations. It just <laughs> never fails. That's right. Every time. How many times have you been sitting in the terminal and you're like, yeah, flight's taken off about half an hour and like, not now. <laughs> exactly. That's what the porta booth is for. When you arrive at your destination and you've got to get something done and he makes two models. There's the porta booth pro, which was the original one that he, that, well, it's the original one that he marketed that was constructed as a porta booth, uh, the old cube one that he still they still sell, and of course the porta booth plus, which is fabulous, especially with the four sixteen. Uh, really, a nice thing to have when you're on the road in an emergency, and you can carry it around in their own carrying bags. They fit in the luggage racks. Yeah, that's actually what I'm set up. showing right now is the travel bag you can get for the plus. Um, yeah. It's a good bag. It's made specifically to fit the plus and it has a ton of pockets. So you can, and it has a yeah. great strap on it that when yeah. you pull the handle up on your, on your bag, it slips right on there and it just drags along with you. Oh yeah, that's right. It has the, the rollerboard bag handle slot that slides Fabulous. right on. If you don't have a porta booth, that's something I think is essential for you to have. And if it's essential, you have to get it at voiceoveressentials.com. Thank you, Harlan. There, I said it. Thank you very much, Harlan. Much appreciated. All right. We'll be right back after these words. Are you confused about how to set up and maintain a professional quality voiceover studio? No wonder. The information out there is mostly mythology. This is the best microphone to use. You have to have a preamp. You need a soundproof booth. This software is the best. Your audio must be broadcast quality. Consult with someone who knows the truth. Someone who's been there, in the trenches, doing voiceover for over 30 years. Someone with unparalleled experience with voiceover studios, who's worked with hundreds of voice actors and designed hundreds of personal studios. He knows how to teach and cares about your success. In one of the harshest environments known to voiceover, your home. Dan Leonard, the home studio master. Separate myth from fact and get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. Contact the home studio master at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Drop off a specimen of your dry audio for a free analysis. Whence came these two radiant celestial brothers united for an instant as they crossed the stratosphere of our starry window? One from the east and one from the west. Very good. All right, now we're sure to be busted for running that clip after it's been yeah, an Oscar nominated film. Boy, did that one do well last night because it, it was a cute film. It was great. It was the really music cool. was great. The cinematography was great. It was just cute all around. Yeah. And it deserved to win. And speaking, especially because of that scene. Speaking of cute all around. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it is time to bring in these guests who have been waiting so patiently in the green room, although it's the white room in Boston right now. Joining us from, <laughs> joining us from Boston, Massachusetts, two of my buddies in the voiceover business. Rosie and Brian Amador, welcome to East West Audio Body Shop. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> but that's actually Cambridge, Massachusetts. Right. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> oh I, I forgot. <laughs> our, 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 street from Harvard. Uh, our fair city. Exactly. <laughs> the home of Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe. That's yeah, right. That's right. Yes. You got it. Anyway. You know, I used to work for Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe. I used oh, to work. really? Yeah, I worked for Tom and Ray's lawyer yeah. for several years. <laughs> no way. Guy. Yeah, yeah, and there's actually a sign right there in Harvard Square. Yeah, yeah but that's I, that's not where their law office is. I mean, that, oh, that's okay. just their headquarters. But the uh, no, the office was just in some guy's house. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do we cheat him? And how? Okay. Uh, anyway, 
Folks, it's great to have you on the show. You've, you've got a fascinating career going in, in voiceover, especially since you're, you do it together, and I guess sort of do that. <clears throat> but uh, first, give us a little bit of your background. Uh, Rosie, yeah. where are you from originally, and, and, and how did you get into voiceover? Well, I'm originally from Puerto Rico. My family is from New York, Puerto Rico, and Argentina. Uh, I came to Boston in 19, let's see, when, oh, a long time ago, mm. when, when I graduated from college, quite a while ago. I think 80, and right? and around 80 or something. Yeah. <laughs> Just use presidential administrations. <laughs> <laughs> Carter. Uh, <laughs> during Carter. <laughs> so, and uh, I met Brian like three years in later. 84. In 84. Uh, and we, well, should I tell you how we met or should I? Absolutely. I want to, I've never heard this story. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. But first about me. (laughs) (laughs) Enough about her. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I uh, grew up to the extent that I grew up in New Mexico, Albuquerque. (laughs) And, uh, I came to Boston in 1979 to study music at New England Conservatory of Music. And in 1984, Rosie and I met. When a a cultural exchange trip was being planned to Nicaragua in the middle of the Contra Civil War. That's right. And we both applied for the trip. He was at the time playing with a flamenco dance company as a a accompanist. And I was working for a theater company and sort of singing on the side because I I always sang. I sang as a child, as a young adult, you name it. And uh, but we both applied for this trip to go as musicians. Mm -hmm. I thought, here's my chance to sing again and to sing in a meaningful way. And we went in a, in a peaceful project to uh, work with Nicaraguan artists and we kind of fell in love, <laughs> came back and <laughs> formed our first band in 1984 called Flor de Caña, Sugarcane Flower. That lasted 10 years. Wow. Then we moved into our new band, n- new band, now 20 years old, <laughs> Soli Since Canto, 1994, yeah. <laughs> Soli Canto, which means sun and song. And we did Latin music full time for all that time. I also did a few other, uh, <laughs> I tried out a few other businesses. I ran an agency called Music Amador for many years, bringing Latin music and dance to the United States. And uh, what else? A few other things along the way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, then, in, in a, I guess we started in voiceover. It kind of happened to us because we were known as Latin musicians and cultural educators. We performed a lot of educational performances. Uh, somebody approached us about doing some narration of stories for Scholastic, a colleague, a musical colleague, who would hire us to supplement what he was doing in Latino schools. And we ended up in st- going into studios and doing educational narration. And we loved it. We absolutely loved it. And uh, then studios started learning about us, noticed that we happened to be bilingual and equally fluent in both English and Spanish. And we got a few more of those calls, but we were still full-time musicians. And then uh, we decided to have a baby, except it turned out to be two babies. So in 1994, <laughs> 96, excuse things, me. Things happen that way, don't they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We discovered we were having twins and well, we you know, were. We always wanted two daughters and we yeah. got them on the same day. That's so right. there you have it. <laughs> so, and just, just around when we were thinking, you know, it, gosh, it's going to be harder to tour because we would both take off on these tours. It's going to be harder to tour with, with these babies. Um, the people in the hospital noticed that Brian kept bringing these rough mixes. It might have been on a cassette or a CD. I don't remember at that point. I think it might have been a of our latest thing. CD, our new CD. We recorded a CD, and uh, they asked me if I would do a promotional campaign for the hospital. So I went into my first professional studio um, of that ilk, you know, with a director listening in on probably ISDN, and I loved it. I loved it. I got to read my own testimonial. But they helped, you know, to turn it into a spot. And I did radio and uh, spots and print media. And I, I said, I love this. And I it kind of planted the seed. Mm, I wonder if this is something that we could do on the side, you know. And uh, I started researching. I started researching online and found out that, oh, you don't have to be in L.A. or New York. You can actually be in Boston, maybe. You, so you did, you did the magical voiceover search and Absolutely. It's, like, it's like the door to you know 
Dorothy's house opening onto Munchkin land. <laughs> and it was probably when you guys did that too. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm, sometimes you have to not pay attention to the man behind the curtain. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so we made a decision, you know, when, by the time our girls got into sort of middle school, we really didn't want to be touring. And by that point, I was decidedly, I was determined to look more seriously at voiceover. And I started uh, communicating with, with people, wonderful people like John Florian, who I considered my, to this day, my VO guardian angel. I met him at an APAC conference uh, and he informed me and educated me so much with his wonderful online newsletter. And then I just started making friends in the VO community and we started improving our studio and really learning and educating ourselves and studying. And so little by little, uh, it increased to the point where about five years ago, we went full time, pretty a much. A little more than that, actually. Maybe a little more. Well, yeah. we started a while, a long time ago, about Sometimes. 20 years ago. But I would say in the last five years, we've been uh, full, full time. And we love it. We love the community. We love our clients. The community is the best part. Oh, my gosh. We love all of our friends, our voiceover friends. They're fantastic. Yeah, we sure do have a good time when we get together, don't we? We do. We do. Now, what, one of the fascinating things about, you know, I mean, the two of you here, and George, I, this is this is the secret to successful marriages in voiceover. <laughs> yeah, I'm listening. They Uh-oh. both do it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It helps. You it know, helps. you have you have all the same voiceover friends and stuff. It's like, yes, <laughs> but it helps to have a B room. It does. It does. It does. I mean, well, let, let's, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but okay. one of the, what, what you guys really do, which I always find really impressive is how you concentrate on your voiceover business as a business. Mm. Uh, I mean, I, I talk with you guys often and you're, and you're always talking about, we're doing this, we're doing that. What are some of the things that you do that perhaps people should be doing to really make sure that they're, they are running their business as a business, as opposed to their hobby? Ah, well, you know, there's, as Rosie was saying, you know, and you know, the voiceover community is an incredibly generous community of people who are always willing to share their experience and knowledge. And one of the things we've learned is that clients really like it when you appreciate them, when you make them feel like you're taking care of them and like you're really committed to giving them exactly what they want. So that's one part of it. Another part of it is to do your research and find out what other possible avenues of new business there may be that you can approach and to set uh, set time aside to do that. Rosie's a lot better at that than I am. But, you know. We're working on that. <laughs> but I cook, so, you know. <laughs> There's trade-offs. You know. Yeah, exactly, yeah. 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 Yeah, it's it's important to run it as a business, and I and I'm always really impressed how you do that because you've got to be really organized. I mean, it's because you're you're both doing this. Yes. Yeah. Now now I'm thinking of the Americans. You guys are actually Cuban spies. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have that on my list to watch, and I haven't seen it yet, but I've heard it's really good. <laughs> great show, great show. But anyway, uh, back to what we were talking about here. Um, now, how are you set up there in, in your in your home uh, for for studio space? Because you were saying you've got you've got to have more than one booth apparently, or do you like share? Or it's like you know, it's like <laughs> the bathroom in the morning if you only got no. one. No, no, that's not quite. Well, that. this is well, the room we're seated in. This is, here is our, our office. This is our office. Yeah. This is where all the the business goes on. Mm-hmm. Um, right over uh, behind us is the uh, the studio on the other side of the hall, um, which is also my office. That's where my primary computer is. And where the mic is set up. And then in this side, on the other side here, our daughter Sonia has her bedroom with a walk-in closet. And her walk-in closet is our B room in case of emergencies. So if one of us is doing a a job and the other one needs to do an audition, we'll go in there with the uh, Apogee mic and an iPad and and do it in the walk-in closet. And I do do use my chaotic eyeball. With my USB they mic. didn't pay us for that prompt. That <laughs> no, they, they really didn't, and they're not paying us either. But. I like it. <laughs> I'm very fond of it. I take it on the road with us when we have to do remote recording, and it saved us many a time. Yeah, you yeah. Got, so got, mostly we record in our in our proper studio. Um, although occasionally I've I've had to use the iPad on on the road. But yeah, yeah, having that studio be for auditions is great. That way we don't have to kick each other out of the studio to do auditions. Now, do you work together on some stuff? If you're working on a project, does one record, you know, do the engineering and the editing and the other does the voice? Do you switch off or what? I engineer Rosie sometimes. Usually if I'm recording, I'll just engineer myself. 
but sometimes when she's doing it, I'll engineer her. But you know what's really fun is when we do when we do auditions that are dialogues and yeah. they're male female. Right. That's a lot yeah. of fun. We get to do those together. So, um, and that's and if that's I think something that a lot of people don't have. Yeah, yeah. they're they're alone in their closet. Yeah, like, yeah. what are you and doing you, in there? Yeah, uh, you know, and and they don't get to work with somebody else. And yeah. if you're no, you can somebody, imagine the other person conversing with you, but it's not the same. It's not right? the same. That's right. That's right. Oh, so. It is fun. I, you know, but to have somebody who you're totally familiar with and can be completely familiar with, I'll bet that works just fabulous. Yeah, it's it great. does. We're and actually, we coach each other as well. That's also very yes, helpful. that's also very helpful. Especially if, you know, if it feels like a really you know, oh, this is a good fit. Let's let's give it your best shot. And so we listen to each other and we help. And that that's oh, also really lovely. Yeah. Do you have any creative arguments over that? Or uh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're you're normal. That's good. Yeah. I'm now, done. <laughs> now, now you 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 still have your band, and and you yeah you yeah I knew you were touring last year. You're not doing as many tours as you were, but how do you handle your your voiceover business when you when you're when you're touring? Well, you're right. We're not touring as much. Uh, last year was it last year we went to well, California year before last. already. The year before last, California. we went to Cal- about a year and a half ago. Yeah, we went yeah. to California, mm-hmm. and you know, mostly when we tour, we. Um, we we try to actually take the time to be musicians and be able to connect with friends because we'll often we'll prioritize going to areas to tour where we have friends. So hint hint, we love LA and <laughs> ready to come we'll back. We'll have a spare room, so just in case, just saying. <laughs> but um, but we do. I do take. I do tuck away the iPad and the, <laughs> the USB mic, but, um, just in case. And if I have to, I have to. So when we were in California, for example, we were staying with our friends in Mountain View, and they had a nice walk-in closet. And a producer contacted me from Boston and said, "Rosie, we're doing a, a benefit for the, the Boston Children's Hospital, and we're bringing Juanes, a major uh, Colombian, you know, superstar singer, and oh, yeah. we'd love you to help out with a, a PSA and uh, you know a, a spot." And I did it in the closet and uh, it came out great. And, you know, they laid the music over it. So it didn't, <laughs> I mean, anything would have sounded great with that music behind it. But no, it, it, it's great to be able to have that flexibility and, uh, and take it on the road. So, yeah, that's, you know, we just do it on a case by case basis. Yeah. But no, I do actually really feel that it's important for all of us to take a break sometimes. And I try to let our clients know this is when we're going away. We have a spot on our new website that tells people, you know, when we're available and when we're not. And I tell them we're going away and I email everyone and I say, I'd love to do your work before this date and after this date and in between only emergencies and really short jobs. So please, you know, help us out while we do this other thing that we need to do in our lives because we all need rest, you know, and it works. People are very respectful and they're very kind and they write and I'm so sorry to be interrupting. Could, do you think you could do this? But it's not very many people. No, I have to say it really. They are really respectful. So that's, that's worked out. You just have to kind of set boundaries and be kind. Kindness goes a long way. And I, I think that's one of the reasons why I feel so comfortable in the voiceover community. I feel like our community is so kind. And I kind of feel like we fit right in, you know, because we enjoy being kind too. So it just goes in every direction. Yeah. Now, what type of stuff do you do? I mean, you're, you're saying you're doing commercials and stuff. and uh, But what, what genres of material do you guys really you know, spend the most of the time doing? We do a lot of e-learning, um, a fair amount of industrial kind of stuff. Um, well, we do quite a bit of books, commercial. Yes, commercial and, uh, you know, kind of PSAs, that sort of thing. Rosie does quite yeah. a bit of medical as well. Yeah. I do some, a um, little bit of IVR, not a ton. I do, I do quite a yeah. bit of IVR. <laughs> yeah. How, mu- how much of it is, is English versus Spanish? Actually, it's funny because this um, last couple of years, we finally started keeping data on all that stuff. Yeah. And last year was the first year we had really consistent data that we could analyze. And it was a bit surprising. We found out that we had about 60% of our work in Spanish and 40% in English. Wow. Yeah. And we actually had more commercial work than we, than we thought we had. We thought we were much more narration. But um, I'm the voice of Mattress Firm in, um, Texas. in Florida and no, Florida and yeah. uh, Miami, actually, and uh, Chicago. And they, boy, they, they, thank you, Mattress Firm, but they, <laughs> they, they have me working every week and that, that, you know, that adds up. So that's lovely. 
Yeah. Especially yeah. President's Day. Yes. <laughs> Lots of President's <laughs> yes. Day. Yes. Many President's Day. Yes. That's the time yeah. to buy a bed. I'm going <laughs> to celebrate President's Day with a mattress sale. You got it. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, you guys also do some some audiobooks and stuff. And we yeah. wanted to play an excerpt from one of the books that you did so you so people can hear the unique okay. the kind of stuff you do. You want yeah, you want to roll that, George? I do, I do. I just got to find that one tab that got hidden between 17 other tabs. Should, should I give you a little, a little uh, intro to it? Like, yeah, talk to us while, while he's it. trying to figure out where it is. Okay. So what's cool about this clip is that we do bilingual voiceover. Our whole family did this. So, so do our kids. Yeah. So this was the first audiobook that our kids participated in, and, and it's Lola's Fandango. Oh, and cool. It's a story about a little girl who two learns, little girls. Two little girls, but one of them gets taught to dance flamenco by her papi. So this is the papi, this is the mommy, and our daughters, Sonia and Alisa, we're the two sisters in cool. the family. Okay. So here that's it, what you'll be hearing. Awesome. Okay. Well, here it is. Okay. Lola's Fandango, written by Anna Vita, illustrated by Misha Archer. Narrated by the Amador family. That evening, when Mami and Clementina go to the grocery store, Lola takes her first lesson. The most important thing in flamenco is rhythm, says Papi. Before you start to dance, you have to be able to clap the rhythm. Listen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All right? All right, says Lola. Now let's clap together, says Papi. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Wow. And that that's the way, to me, that's the way audiobooks should be. It was like watching Reading Rainbow, but... Uh, <laughs> I love that show, Reading I Rainbow. Reading, hey, when you got a young kid, you got you to have... You know, you, nothing beats LeVar. Uh, yeah. But, but I, uh, I mean, that's, to me, that's what an audiobook should be. Uh, mm-hmm. Especially, you know, especially kids' books. You've got to, it's got to be multimedia. It's got to be, you know... And that's that's an important thing to do, and that sounds yeah. great. Well, and what's great about this project and a lot of the audio books we've gotten to do for kids is I also get to do the music for them. So for mm-hmm. Lola's Fandango, I composed all the music and and <laughs> recorded it here in our studio, and yeah. and with these other ones as well. Yeah, yeah, we love doing these. I'll tell you, I, for me, the the bilingual audio books and documentaries and audio tours are my favorite. I love, I love, love, love doing them. So much fun. And also educational uh, animation too. We work with a few clients who, who send us some of that work and it's so much fun. We have a blast. If yeah. it ain't fun, why do it? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of fun, uh, I figured, you know, before we go to the break here that mm-hmm. uh, perhaps you can play us a tune. Right, perhaps we could. Okay. <laughs> if anybody has a question for Brian and Rosie, right. throw it in the chat room, and our right. amazing chat room monitor, Antonio Gettig, will yes. get it on here for yes, us. Yes, Antonio. Antonio. I want to say also while we're on here that I believe some friends from Argentina uh, who I invited to participate this evening might be listening. So I'm a special hello to Natalia and Pablo. Um, uh, so grateful that you're here. And hopefully some friends from the Dominican Republic too. And Antonio from Puerto Rico. I know he was here a little earlier. So gracias a todos por estar aquí con nosotros. Okay. Alrighty. De Cuba. A classic from Cuba yeah. by Miguel Matamoros. It tells the story of a couple walking down the street. She wants a kiss. And he says, what? With all these people watching, let's wait a little longer because I want to kiss you like this. And that's where you can join in. You need to join us on rhythmic kissing. All right. All right. You can do it. Brian will guide you. Le dice muy apurada, bésame en aquel rincón. Y el novio le dice: Espera, caramba, deja que pase la gente. Que mira las callejeras, son miradas imprudentes. Que mira las callejeras, mamá, son miradas imprudentes. Te ves 
noche, mi amor. Si la gente está mirando de allí, esperemos un momento mejor. Que quiero besarte así. 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 Así a bailar. De mis cosas que viven para ti, esperemos un momento mejor. Que quiero besarte así, 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 así. Yeah, bravo. Gracias. <laughs> uh, that song is from the 40s. Can you believe it? Old Cuban well, stuff. We love it. We love it. Ah, <laughs> uh, the oldies, but the goodies. Our- Cuban music yeah, is the so best. Fun. Oh, I love it. We love Thanks it. Thanks to Buena Vista Social Club. It became yeah. so much more oh, publicized. Yeah. 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 I know it opened up a whole world over here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, you know, and Latin music, of course, is, isn't just Latin music. I mean, you've got you know the the you know, you know the clave and the you've got samba, you've got all this this great you know mixture of stuff, uh, you know, Caribbean rhythms and the Cuban rhythms, and it's all great stuff. And you guys seem to you know sort of stretch it around a little bit, don't you? Well, what's, that's your, what's your favorite stuff? Yeah, that's been sort of one of our trademarks all the time that we've been doing music is we've always really loved to do a lot of a wide variety of of styles from all over Latin America because there, there's just so much good stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of the best best composers and uh, you know in Latin music, and then a lot of a lot of American jazz guys who started to pick up uh, you know Latin jazz, you know, Stan yeah, exactly. Gatt and uh, Dizzy, and, you know, yeah, Dizzy Gillespie and uh, uh, Paul Winter and, and then those guys, and just just wonderful stuff. It is, it is. We're very lucky to play with a bunch of great guys too, because we 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 can be a duo trio all the way to a sextet. Yeah. And uh, with them, we play Brian's, a lot of Brian's original stuff and then some of these classics that we love. Well, and being in a Boston, lot of jazzy we stuff. have access to a lot of really wonderful Berkeley musicians. Berklee College of Music, so. New England Conservatory, where Brian yeah, I, I, I'd say. Pretty <laughs> <good>. <laughs> yeah. All right. If anybody's got any questions again, uh, you know, throw them in the chat room and we can, uh, we can ask them of Brian and Rosie. Uh, but right now we got to talk about our, this big thing that you're going to, George, in Atlanta. That's right. Vio Atlanta. Atlanta. Vio Atlanta, uh, which is, what are the dates on that? It is starting on March 12th. And uh, we don't have the notes in the show notes for some reason, but it starts March 12th. I know that much because I'm going to be there. Um, okay. And I do know that there is a still a promo code for that. And it's EWABS. So, uh, but it starts March 12th. If you want to sign up and find out more about it, it's over mm-hmm. at voatlanta.me. And there's an incredible number of great coaches and just movers and shakers in the voiceover community who are going to be at this event. It's going to be a really, really great, um, very well-produced. And I was there last year, so I can't say it is a well-produced event. Um, you're going to really enjoy yourself there. Uh, I know you did. I, I really <laughs> did. I really did enjoy myself. I, you know, I've been to a lot of voiceover conferences and, um, this one just felt a little bit different. I don't know why. Good vibes, good time. The way it was kicked off was just really a great feeling. And um, the venue worked out beautifully. It was the uh, the Hilton, the airport Hilton in Atlanta. Ah. And uh, the place is really set up great for this. You know, it's not too sprawling. Everything's in one area, but there's still a lot of space. And uh, you can get outside and walk to several restaurants right outside of the uh, the building, so you can get places very quickly, and uh, which is a very important thing, by the way. When you're in a hotel, especially when it's this big and everything's in one place, leave the hotel at least once a day. It's very, very important <laughs> because you start to forget that oh, we're we're in the south and it's warm and the weather's nice and oh, I've been in air conditioning for a few days. Maybe I need to get some fresh air. It's very important to do that, remind you. But anyway, voatlanta.me for anybody interested in going and finding out who's the who's who of who's going to come. I know a few of my friends, Cliff Zellman and um, uh, Roy Yokelson are going to be Uncle there. Roy's going to be there. Yeah. So go over there. If you still got, if you still can, 
go to voiceover Atlanta. All right. I'd like to add something about voiceover Atlanta. Oh, my, for friend, it. my friend, Simon Fogiel is coordinating the very first VO Spanish day there. So for my friends, Pablo Hernandez, oh, yeah. Antonio, <laughs> who are online here and anybody else who might be able to make it to VO Atlanta on Saturday, Simone is having an entire day as part of that conference. Yeah. Did you do that, George? With, with amazing... With very renowned Spanish VO que talent. Quedan todos cordialmente invitados. Thank you for saying that. I almost forgot. And now I know how to say Simone's last name correctly. Yes. We've been, we've been oh, wondering yeah. for about five years. <laughs> All right. That explains it. For, it's for not heel? an easy one. It's for, not yes. easy. Is it like for heel? No. For heel. For heel. For heel. Thank you. For Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Spe- speaking of Spanish, um, my yes, wife just no. just scooted <laughs> in here and, and brought out one of our favorite CDs, which is, uh, it's, a, it's called, It's a Scream How Levine Does the Rumba. Uh, uh, it's the latin jewish musical story of the 1940s to the 1980s (laughs) tito puente carol king herb alpert abby lane you know stuff like that great stuff a lot of great salsa music on there you know my mom my mom played with tito puente he kind of started in her band she was a star she was she was in the uso with with uh, dean martin and uh jerry lewis Lewis. Dean martin Mm -hmm. she was in movies in mexico with cantinflas wow yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We we have it in our household. So nice. that's great. I'm gonna look at that. We like the salsa music. I've learned how to dance from the crotch. That's the language. <laughs> anyway, anyway. <laughs> we, we call it the hips, Dan, but that's hips, okay. <laughs> that's not the way I was taught. Anyway, maybe mine was more African, I'm not quite sure. But anyway. Uh, we're with uh, Brian and Rosie Amador uh, here at East West Audio Body Shop. We've got lots of great questions from our amazing audience in our chat room. First off, from Alex K. In the voiceover business, is having a regional accent detrimental, or is it better to have a regional accent? I, I guess he's meaning he, in Spanish, probably. It, it depends. I, I don't know what you're talking about, man. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it depends who we are. No, it well, depends. It depends. I think in English as in Spanish, you know, there are times when that's what the producer is looking for. But it's, um, I think it's best to be able to, to speak without any regional accent because that certainly it um, widens your, your possibilities. And, you know, the most common thing that's asked for with Spanish um, usually is neutral Latin American. That's right. That's right. With no identifiable regionalisms. Now, mind you, I would say, um, let's see. There's the train. I don't know if you can hear that. That's actually good. You heard it, yeah. (laughs) Is that Charlie still on the MTA there? (laughs) (laughs) Um, I'll tell you something about, I don't think I have the math right, but maybe a, a quarter of our work is accented English. So on request, you know, we can, so I sort of channel my dad, (laughs) my papi from Argentina, uh, and we can, we can add it. And since I'm Puerto Rican and Argentine, I can also inflect uh, with those accents in my Spanish. But Brian's right. Primarily, I think one of the things that makes our uh, voiceover so attractive in Spanish is the neutral aspect. Uh, And then again, being able to add in a little accent when, when it's called upon for the, you know, specific demographic Yeah, when it's necessary. In the U S you know, if, if we're doing something in Spanish and they do want an accent, most, most often it would be Mexican because that's the, you know, the biggest U S Latino population. Right. Absolutely. Uh, J S Gilbert asks mm. a lot of things, but he asks here, uh, how much of your work is derived due to your ability to do the work both in Spanish and English? How much of the work? Well, I would say it's an interesting question. I, you know, I, I'm surprised because I, well, my hope was always that we'd get. Uh, lots of bi- bilingual jobs. Lots of bilingual <laughs> jobs. Obviously, that's my ideal client, right? To, to do it in both languages. But clearly people are looking mostly for one for language one or the other. Or the other. Yeah. However, that being said, we do have some clients who come to us. And for example, on our YouTube page and on our website, I have a spot I did for Nevada Health. <clears throat> they chose me specifically because they wanted a friendly, warm, you know, <laughs> nurturing voice in English and Spanish um, to invite people to sign up for healthcare. So it does happen. And certainly in telephony and IVR, that is definitely one of the reasons why I get tapped, you know, a lot to do that. 
Um, and sometimes in narration, educational mm-hmm. narration, yeah, we do. But it, it's interesting that it's not that it's not more. I think people look for us for specific projects in one language or another. We, do, as you can imagine, we do a lot of overdub work, I'm a sure. lot of videos or educational material that's created in, initially in English, uh, and it, it varies. It really it, it can be at just about anything. I mean, we did something for prisons not so long ago. I did remember we did something for uh, a client who had us do oh, yeah, yeah. education about sexual harassment in prisons. Right. So it was kind of a tutorial on that. Um, well, that's right. And I did one on what the procedures are when you come to our jail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, but I mean, it, it runs the gamut. I mean, that's just something recent that we did that we're remembering. Um, but, but overdubs and the, uh, we've learned the ability to, as you may know, Dan and George, we, there's a lot more words in Spanish than in English. So to fit the Spanish words over the English is, is that rather why it so much faster. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's rather a challenge. So we love it when we get to work with producers who are willing to tweak the video or who have enough B-roll that it gives us time to finish our phrases. Otherwise, we spend a lot more time trying to make things fit in without sounding like you're use, you know, selling used cars. But I give, we give our clients a heads up about that. We let them know. We educate them as much as possible. And by and large, they're really willing to accommodate us so that yeah. the product will sound good and not like a used car and sales. <laughs> we, we have a translator uh, that we work with a lot who, who's very yeah. good at that, at tearing things down so you still get the message without yeah. necessarily all the words. Yeah. So if the client allows us to recommend our translator, that that works out real well. Sometimes we get given scripts that aren't very good. Yikes! And I'm sure that Antonio and Pablo, yeah, yeah right. might might be familiar with those. Mm-hmm. And uh, and we have to make recommendations. We respectfully make recommendations about how they may be improved. And we don't record unless we're told it's okay. But nine times out of ten. Uh, people take our recommendations and, you know, they're working with native speakers. So it's, right. they know, they know they can trust us. So we're lucky. We, we're really lucky. We have great, great clients. Great. Yeah. Uh, JS also asks, does it bother you when you hear very obvious fake Hispanic accents in commercials, games, and things like that, et cetera? It bothers me when I hear a very fake accent, no matter what it is. <laughs> if I, if I heard myself trying to do an Irish accent on a commercial, <laughs> That would bother me too. (laughs) (laughs) Not that good. Being a Spanish leprechaun, that would be fascinating. (laughs) (laughs) Pablo O'Hare. If it's it's a joke, I can live with it. If it's something funny, making fun, I I, I get it. But yeah, if it's a real spot or if it's a real narration and and it's supposed to be real authentic Spanish, it is very upsetting to see that. Get ready. Cinco de Mayo is coming. Uh, Jay Tremblay voice asks, uh, Brian and Rosie, do you tend to go to conferences, events together or tag team them for more coverage? I don't know. I seem to run into you guys together just about everywhere. Yeah. You know, well, I went to FAFCON many years ago. The first one that I went to was in Atlanta. That was what? Number five. I can't remember. I think I, think I met you there. I, I think, think we there. met there. Yeah. Yes. I, I think I liked you. I think I did. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. I did. I did. And after I came back, I said, Brian, this is amazing. You have to come next time. And since then, we've been coming together. And we're coming to Wovo. For the first time, we're coming to WovoCon. We're, yes. We'll come together. We debated whether, ooh, should we spend that much money? We said, you know what? We can't not, go, not be there. We yeah. cannot be there, both of us. So I'm we're making bringing the ukulele. Best. And you're bringing the look, <laughs> and I'll bring my clavis. We'll be all set then in the lobby. <laughs> we'll do some Spanish Hawaiian music. That'll be different. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Steve Gonzalez, voiceover, uh-huh. asks: um, Audio tours, contact you, contact production houses, uh, use Mandy.com, museum departments of marketing. You know that's uh, a it, that's a tough one, Steve. I I actually did a lot of I made a lot of special efforts to to try and get more audio tours, and we do we do less than I would like. Fortunately, Google is our friend, and we've been found by some script writers. One that happens to live in Cambridge, who's been using me for for some work with the Guggenheim and a, a bunch of different museums. So that was great. Um, and I've done some work for Lonely Planet. Also, uh, that was a you know for for uh, helping people with Spanish travel in Latin America. So if you if you buy the Lonely Planet app on traveling, I forget what it's called, Fast Talk or something like that. I forget. But anyway, I'm I'm the Spanish, the Latin American Spanish voice. So harder to get in to to get in the door there. 
Um, but, but worth it. Really fun. Really fun doing those. Yeah. And he says, by the way, cool three, two clave while singing. Thank you. <laughs> George. Yeah. So which one of you guys, which one of you is the geek? <laughs> One yeah, of you one is of you almost is the always the geekier one. Which, which one of us is the geekier yeah. one? <laughs> yeah, that would be me. Este. Este. <laughs> Definitely. So Definitely. what do you... Uh, Although, how much? I look, yeah. I, I, I read your posts and Dan's posts and I email them to him because he doesn't pay, he doesn't keep an eye on things the way I do. So your, your good information is right. funneled through me to him and then he's to do everything about so it. So she'll send it to me with something like, do you get this? <laughs> <laughs> Look into this. This sounds good. Couldn't we use this? <laughs> so, so how much gear do you guys actually manage to travel? Or do you have to travel with? Do you, do you guys keep it under control? Oh, one setup know. for each of you or just share one setup? No, no, we just share one setup. You know, okay. we'll, we'll travel with a, usually the Apogee duet, I mean, Apogee mic, our, our eyeball and, either an iPad or, or a laptop. No, but, but in the studio, we use two no, different mics. when we travel. Oh, sorry, when we travel. Yeah. Okay. What do you guys use? What do you, which yeah. mics do you guys use? These days, um, Rosie's been using an AT4040 and I use a, a CAD C1000S just like that, or 100S, sorry, like you've got right there, yeah? And That's I'm liking it. Mic. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. liking it quite a bit. Oh, Good. the E100 is fantastic. Great yeah. work. Yeah. E100. Which is why it's the Very official good. mic of right here. <laughs> all righty uh the real amy fisher asks do you guys do jingles no we have not we done, have jingles. done a jingle I, I don't know it just hasn't come up it's it's funny because we were talking about this dan you and i the other day the fact that we haven't really featured on our website we just recreated our website in the fall after many years which is beautiful by the way thank Great, you beautiful thank website you. Please, please visit and let us know what you think. It's amadorbilingualvoiceovers.com. And we didn't really feature our, our music very strongly, not on the homepage. We, we put it in our bios, and I'm reconsidering that. Maybe maybe we should, right? I mean, obviously, it's a huge part of, of who we are, but we we thought maybe it would be confusing to, to mix, mix it up on the homepage. So I don't know. I think we might put that in. Because who knows, maybe jingles would come out of it or something. I mean, Brian writes music for all the audiobooks, a lot of the audiobooks, the kids' audiobooks, but in general. And we've done a little bit. Some of our e-learning uh, clients have asked us for some instrumental music and, and have used some of his music. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it hasn't been, it hasn't been something we've thought of a lot. Okay. Yeah. Pablo Hernandez asks how long you act exactly have you been in voiceover we talked about this earlier he must have come in he's on puerto rican time so he's yeah. getting, <laughs> you know. we we started actually in something like oh i don't know late 80s late, late with, 80s yeah. with uh with the uh, educational narration but really i would say it, within the last 10 years and the most within the last six years is when we've been focusing on it a lot more um, yeah about Four, Pablo, year, four years ago pregunta. was when we really stopped <laughs> doing any long tours, yeah. music tours, because our kids were in high school and it just didn't make sense anymore. So that's when we really threw ourselves. I'll, I'll say it in Spanish for Pablo. I know he speaks English, but for fun. Pablo, hace, hace como veintipico de años que estamos haciendo locución, pero al, a tiempo completo hace como cinco o seis. Gracias por la pregunta. <laughs> nice. De nada. Yeah. All righty. Divox <laughs> asks... This is an interesting question. Where is neutral Latin American Spanish spoken? Seriously, right. I this, is what I want, this is what he wants to learn. Right. Yeah, it's a great, a great well, question. Where, where is standard American spoken? Standard North American. They say like Midwest. Maybe. Yeah. In Buffalo. <laughs> In Buffalo. Uh, yeah. at, that, at that microphone, right? Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So neutral Latin American is something that. It's a great um, question. Where you hear it most is in the media. You hear it in movies and in on TV and news newscasts. You know, it's basically um, an attempt to make it accessible to anybody anywhere in Latin America. So, you know, if you have really strong Argentine regionalisms, it's going to turn off people in Mexico. The idea is that if you have a, an accent that's fairly flat without any distinct regionalisms, then it's going to be pretty much uh, acceptable to anybody all over Latin America. So I guess you might say nowhere and everywhere would be the answer to that question. <laughs> you know, because if you go to Argentina, people have an accent. If you go to Mexico, people have an accent. Right. But if you 
turn on the TV, chances are you're going to hear what's referred to as neutral Latin American. So um, it's it's something that a lot of people um, are encouraged to learn to do. Yeah. 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 My, my, my son is is fairly fluent in Spanish. He's, he's actually a Spanish major in college and a linguistics major. And he speaks Spanish very, very fluently, but with no accent at all. He sounds like someone from Buffalo talking in Spanish. To <laughs> Buffalo. You mean right. that they were speaking Spanish with a Buffalo American accent? Yes. <laughs> there is no Buffalo accent. Como te llamo, uh, por favor. You mean like that? It's, it's, it's something exactly like that. Uh, Dr. Bill Lord asks, have you ever been told that you're not authentic enough? Ooh, that what a comment Ooh. that is. <laughs> I have not. I have not. No, no but I've been told um, that I have an accent. Yes. In English. Yes. And in Spanish. Yeah, he's, he's been actually he's been studying he's been studying accent reduction because he wants. We were talking about that earlier. He wants to be able to to be, do b- both kinds of jobs. You know, you can detect Brian's from New Mexico, and you can detect a little bit of his accent. And he's been working with a, with one of your colleagues at Edge. I get a lot, yeah. a lot less grief about my accent in Spanish than I do in English. Yeah, he speaks rather neutral Latin American Spanish, but in English you can detect his south- <laughs> southwestern roots. So it's nice to have that out of the picture but for no, certain kinds of narration. authenticity has never really come into it right. so much. No. Right. Very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Scott Chambers asks, uh, mm-hmm. "Do you ever compete for jobs if it's like a male and female call? I mean, you like you take a stab at this one. All right, I'll try it, and then." You ever try that or ever happen? Well, we we often audition for the same job if it's open yeah. to both male and female. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. You try to coach the other one to not do it as well? <laughs> <laughs> Have you been lucky enough to both win your yeah. respective no, auditions honey, for a couple's popsicle, read? popsicle, not popsicle. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys ever been lucky enough to each win your respective parts in a script where you get to each play a part in a script? So no, you're playing yeah. both voices? No. I mean, so we we often get hired together. Like a client finds oh, our do. website. Yeah. Oh, he yeah. Tired a client as a couple. Finds our website and says, I, I have a perfect job for you because I want to hire both of you. Yeah. But in terms of auditioning together, uh, you know, or or sometimes separately, we, we haven't yet gotten booked for something. That would be really fun. That would be cool. That would be really yeah. fun if that yeah. It's going to happen someday, right? It's got to happen. <laughs> it's bound to happen. Yeah. Bound to happen. I hope so. <laughs> I, can't, I can't wait to hear those two auditions. All right. Uh, Eric, who's now actually watching Ellen now, says, uh, he says, it's impressive to see that your daughters are doing voiceover too. How old are they now? And how old were they when they started? And Thanks what kind asking. of jobs do they get? Thanks for asking. They'll be 19 in They're April. So They're twins. As yeah. we mentioned, yes. and um, well, when we, I think the first real job they did probably was Lola's Fandango, right? When they were what, uh, eleven or so? They were eleven. Yeah, yeah. So it's been a while. They're going to turn nineteen. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. They do. You know what? It's so fun to see them blossom this way. They are. They studied acting uh, as young as younger kids. And it totally paid off. Totally paid off. They they do Pandora radio spots. Sonia gets booked a lot for um, college for ads. college ads, but she's done other stuff too. Yeah, yeah. And they've done uh, museum work. Um, uh, Alisa's voice is in a California museum in, in the LA area, actually. And, and Sonia's in a museum in Albuquerque. Health. Sonia's in a museum in Albuquerque that I think is is current. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Sonia just did something for the uh, Boston, for the Massachusetts, no, Boston Water and Sewer Commission mm. a couple of weeks ago. Um, and Alisa has done commercials for storage, uh, storage companies for college students, you know. So they have great natural reads. And of course, they do, you know, the teenage read, young adult read. And also Sonia is very good at child voices. So she does apps, educational apps. She does one for Scholastic. Um, called I Learn With Aprendes Con in Spanish. Mm-hmm. And they do a lot you of bilingual learn. work. No, it's called I, I, Aprendes I con. Learn With. You, you Learn With. Well, in Spanish, it's called Aprendes Con. I'm not going to fight about this now. <laughs> ah, yes. And don't fight about You've it. You've been on the show Spanish. long enough to get a <laughs> no. little... She spoke Spanish. <laughs> 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 don't argue with me. <laughs> She spoke Spanish when I met her. I, I guess something must have broken. 
<laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah. Susan Bernard asks, um, do you ever get do you ever get requests for translation service? You talked about this a little bit before or script yes. writing. And do you promote that side of your business as well? Well, we do get requests for it, um, and we only do it if it's a really short thing because, yeah. you know, we're not professional translators. I can do a good translation, but I don't want to spend all day doing it. So if it's a paragraph or two, I'll, I'll take a stab at it. But if it's longer than that, we usually encourage them to send it to this translator that we yeah. work with. Yeah. And plus, you know, it's really hard to translate idiomatic expressions. It, it's so hard. American idiomatic expressions. So, you know... It, it's delicate, so it's better if we hand it over to our translator and and he handles it. <laughs> like like you know, call me anything you want, just don't call me late for dinner. Exactly. <laughs> that one wouldn't translate well. No, not at all. <laughs> Some remember, things you must. Remember trying to explain that to a Nigerian once, and he just sort of looked at me kind of cross-eyed. Um, <laughs> uh, Pablo Hernandez uh, has another question. Uh, do you guys have a golden rule for your voiceover and music business? to be mm. successful. Oh. I think, I don't know. I guess I have one. Yeah. Tell know. me, what, what, what is it? My golden rule is yeah. just remember that every time you work for a client, yeah. the person at the other end of that communication, the person you're working for is a human being just like you, and they want to be treated with respect and kindness. And, um, and you know, they want, the, they want you to do your best. And so do it. I, you know, I, I, w I would agree. I think that um, it holds true for music, too, in terms of, you know, our audiences are there to experience the best that you can offer. So with our VO clients, we work as a team. We really deeply care and we genuinely do about what we're working on. I mean, otherwise, we wouldn't be doing this. I mean, it just would be no fun, you know. Um, and with our music, well, obviously, you know, we're writing the music, singing the lyrics that express our, our hearts you know, desire, you know, the, the messages that we sing in our music are truly an expression of who we are. And, um, and we're sort of putting it out there. I mean, we're all as actors and musicians, we're all vulnerable. We're all, we know, everybody who's participating tonight knows this. We're, we're extending ourselves in a very vulnerable way and wanting to do our best and help the planet in whatever way is possible. So <laughs> we're putting it out there and we're hoping that, that, uh, it'll be well received and we care. We deeply care. And I think that's, that's the key, you know, to really care about how people feel. Yeah. And apparently I, it's working. Well, I love you guys. It's always great to see you. I mean, I see you guys every week anyway, but yeah. I've, been look, I've been looking forward to our opportunity to chat for you at length here on, on uh, some of your philosophy and some of the fun. You guys an honor and, and it really has and really fun talking to you. guys. We think that this show is fantastic and we, we are so grateful to you for doing it. And we really, truly are honored to have been on it. We, I know we're in great company. Oh, all these well, years that you've been doing this. Thank really, you so much for yeah, having us. We, we feel the same way. Okay. And now I'm going to make a little editorial decision. You guys want to play the the bumper out for us? Just uh -huh. a little, a little bit. <laughs> no, so as we go to commercial here, we can at least get you one more time. Now he's got to go find right. his guitar. And, uh, he, he, we uh, didn't think we were going to play anymore. Yeah. Oh, oh well. now we have to decide what to do. I guess I oh, just come up with something silly. And, uh, you know. Brian and Rosie Amador, thanks we'll for being with us, guys. All right, All right. guys. <laughs> Take it easy. Alrighty. <laughs> oh, the nations like banana. <laughs> this one's for Ella. Oh, the races like banana. Oh, the nations like banana. All the way from Nicaragua. Oh, the races like banana. England like it, banana. Uruguay like it, banana. Jamaica like it, banana. Kenya like it, banana. Australia like it, banana. USA like it, banana. banana. Hey, this is Roger Leoparty, and you're watching East West Audio Body Shop.
VoiceOver Extra, the voiceover industry's online news, education, and resource center 24-7. Hundreds, probably thousands of free how-to articles for voiceover success, ranging from home studio to voice acting to business. A free voiceover industry directory, calendar of industry events, resource links, a store, and much more. Bi-monthly webinars on all topics of voiceover, free subscriptions to newsletters, reports, announcements, daily news, and features at voiceoverextra.com. Uh, uh, uh. Don't touch that dial. Seriously, stay with us, please. Dan and George will be right back. Et voilà, this is East West Audio Body Shop with Dan Leonard in the East and George Widham in the West. Merci, and maintenant, back to the show. Hey guys, this is Tom, also known as the voice of SpongeBob SquarePants, and you want to fill your ear holes and your eye holes with Dan and George and the East West Audio Body Shop. Meow. Snails like it too. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. You did it again. All right. That's because Alex walked in right when I was starting the show and distracted it's, me. That's like <laughs> just like when I would. This is going to happen when you and I are together doing this show. Exactly. And, oh, it's going to be a like, train wreck for at least it's, it's seventeen like, episodes. Yeah, really. So everyone's <laughs> going to be tuning in just for that. It's like NASCAR, uh, everybody. That's right. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, first off, uh, thanks to our donors of the week, especially yeah. Eric Aragoni, who is the donor of the century. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nobody has surpassed his Eric. dedication to uh, supporting the show. Thank you so much, Eric. Eric. We, we never see him in the chat room, though. Eric, come on, no. join us. Come and get in the conversation. No. You don't have to, but we'd like to hear from you anyway. No. Um, right. well, who else has been in our, our donation, uh, tab this week? Well, lately we've had donations come in from the likes of, I'm looking right now, Kent's Wald Studios and Greg Tremblay voiceovers. Hey, Greg was in the chat room tonight. He was. Thanks, Thank you Greg. guys. We've also had support from, oh, he signed up as a sustaining member. Very, very nice. Thank you. Outstanding. David Smith. David's a regular. Jeffrey Scott Chambers, also a regular donor. I'm starting to see a lot of the same names every week, which is pretty cool. Patty Gibbons. Um, there's Eric, of course. And a whole bunch more came in last week. Brian Page. Thanks, Brian. He's down in our, down there in Orange County. My dad. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, I'm glad he's finally yeah. stepping up the... Uh, yeah. <laughs> really. Amanda Fellows. Shelly Avellino. Holy smokes. I mean, the list gets slightly longer every week of all those recurring... Uh, sustaining folks right. maureen vogel i mean yeah. bill russell and we really Gosh. appreciate the help and if, if you want to donate to our cause here you know we we're we're trying to get to, we're, we're going to be upgrading some of our equipment when we move the show completely to southern california and it's going to be even better than this if you thought that was possible which i'm sure you have um we're going to get some updates some stuff and uh so we could use a little help with that. Plus, we got to pay for the bandwidth so you don't have to watch other people's commercials. <laughs> you get to watch the ones that are paying to be here, which is pretty important. Uh, let's see. You're going to be in New York City next week. But I think we talked about that. We but you can talk about that. it again. Well, we definitely covered that. But yes, I will. <laughs> uh, February 25th to the 27th. Actually, the 27th is a Friday. And I still have a, a number of slots available for anybody in New York who needs to see me face to face. So if you're in the New York City area. Um, I'd love to come see you. Just reach out to us. Send an email to, you can send it to me, George.Widham, or to my assistant, Rebel.Claire. That's right. Rebel is her real name, R-E-B-E-L, Rebel.Claire, C-L-A-I-R, at Edge Studio. I can just imagine what her parents were like. At EdgeStudio.com. That's right. So if anybody liked it. And also be in the Philadelphia Mar uh, Philadelphia area, March 2nd. So if wow. you're in that area, let me know. Because if, if you don't let me know, I'm going to go skiing in the Poconos. Okay. <laughs> and, and otherwise you're gonna love it this, you're gonna love it this year i, I want to get at least one day of skiing in this year i vouch i vow to do that all right uh, plug uh, for narrator helper narrator hel narrator helper i can't even narrate today narratorhelper.com if you're looking to produce a long form project and you're the voice and you have to deal with the whole production probably working for acx um this is a great resource for you amy golan my wife who I trained on how to edit and record and master audiobooks. She will help you through it and do it very efficiently. Um, she's got a great ear and she's really on top of it. So uh, let her know if she could help you out. All right. Yeah. Uh, also, if you missed the show, we're on YouTube. All 170 
nine episodes of eWebs, including the amazing first episode, which everybody has to see, is available on YouTube. Uh, just go over to our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash eweb show with two S's, unlike our our email address. And like us right. on Facebook and Twitter and all those places. You guys have done all that. Keep doing it and tell your friends to do it. Uh, we need to thank our sponsors once again. The amazing Harlan Hogan voiceover extra edge studio. Point to the sign, George. And uh, <laughs> voice Zam, the best way to present your demos and voiceover Atlanta. All of our, all these great folks for providing the uninterrupted live stream and bandwidth of this fabulous show you have watched this evening. Mostly uninterrupted. Uh, yes. I'd like to thank my wife, especially for coming in with the album. Um, <laughs> sounds like she really enjoyed the show tonight, which is really great. Yeah, um, I'd like to thank uh, our good family friend, Alex Krogadal for being here tonight even though he was just slightly distracting. <laughs> um, I'd like to thank him for hanging out for throughout the show to keep Ella entertained because uh, my wife is not here. So thanks a lot, Alex. Appreciate the help. All righty. And uh, of course, we need to thank uh, Kathy Gurdon, our marvelous producer for getting great guests like Brian and Rosie. I'm like, we're getting Brian and Rosie. All right. That's great. Uh, Anthony getting for his usual stellar job in the chat room. Uh, Shelly Avellino helping out when she can in there. Jack DeGaulle for the amazing job he does with the show notes. If you miss something, you want an address, you want you know a web address or something like that, it's there in the show notes along with the uh, the show, and it's right right above me here. If you just look right above my head, you'll see all the all the menus up there. Show notes are up there as well. Uh, also, Tim McKean for working on Ewab's Essentials. I got to check and see what they've got in there. It sounds like they're throwing a lot of tips of the week in there. Easy to watch stuff. And Lee Penny for being Lee Penny, because what would we be without Lee Penny? We're not quite sure. Right. Uh, let's see. Well, that's going to do it for us tonight. Uh, thanks again to Brian and Rosie for joining us tonight. And uh, have a great week. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's an Ewab's first. It took me 179 I think so. episodes to I actually believe it was. See. Well, that's been like <laughs> crawling up in there and whoa. Oh my brain. I gotta <laughs> shove that back in there. All righty. Uh, <laughs> that's gonna do it for us tonight. Um do we have anybody planned for next week or are we off next week? We're, or we're gonna going take on? the week off because I'm gonna be in New York. Yeah, actually in Pennsylvania and uh, skiing. I am actually trying. <laughs> I'm actually going to try to take that day off. Unless somebody needs me in Philly, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that day officially off and actually try to go skiing that day. So right. So we'll be off next week, but the week after that, you don't want to miss it. It's going to be our international eweb show. That's going to be on much six hours earlier. We're going to mm -hmm. be on at three o'clock Eastern time, noon uh, Pacific time, with people from all over the world joining us from new zealand and the canary islands and great britain and and various other places we're gonna have a great conversation about international voiceover you don't want to miss that and it'll give you a nice break for your afternoon anyway so that's going to do it for us tonight i'm dan leonard still freezing my tochas off in the east and i'm george whittem in the west and together we are east, east west, west audio, audio body, body shop, shop. Have a great week, everybody. We'll see you. Good night, y'all.